Hi and welcome to the second episode of the Django Package Review Series. In this episode we're going to be reviewing Django REST Auth, but particularly a fork of the Django REST Auth package and there's a reason for that and we'll get into that in this episode. Now if you're new to the series, what we do is we review Django packages and you can find them here at djangopackages.org. If they're not on here, then they'll be on GitHub, but either way we'll leave a link in the description of the video for you to go and find that package and test it out yourself. Now to follow along, all you need to do is just go to GitHub to the Django package review repository. There's also a link in the description below. And what you can do is just clone or download this repository. And once you've got it open in your editor of choice, and so what you're gonna wanna do is go to the second branch here, which is the Django REST auth branch. That's where the finished code will be if you just wanna go straight to that. Otherwise, to follow along, you can start here on the master branch, code along with me, and at the end, you'll have the second branch here, which is the code at the end of the video. And so once you've cloned or downloaded this, then we can get started. All right, so here on Django packages, you're gonna to wanna to click on authentication to go to that category of packages. And then here you've got a list of all the packages for authentication. Now in the last one, we reviewed Django all auth, which is one of the most well-known packages for handling authentication. And something that goes really hand in hand with that package is the Django rest auth package. And specifically, this package is meant for handling authentication for a rest API but it integrates so well with the Django all auth package that if you are using Django all auth and you want to build an API, then using Django rest auth is pretty much your best bet. So I'm gonna click on that and then we can go to the GitHub page. And so here it is, this is the Django rest auth package. So it says here that this app makes it extremely easy to build Django powered SPAs, so single page applications, or mobile apps exposing all registration and authentication related functionality and REST, so JSON. And so if you wanna to go to the documentation, you can just scroll down and click on the documentation link. And then this is the reader docs page where you can read all about this project. It's relatively simple to set up, but before we go and run through all of this, I'm gonna show you another package, which is a fork off of this repository. Because if we just go back here, you can see that it's not really that active. There aren't any too recent updates to this. And that's why there's a fork of this package. So I'm just gonna search for jazz band here. So the package or GitHub repository rather is called DJ REST auth. So pretty similar to Django REST auth, just DJ REST auth. And there you can see it says forked from the Tivix repository there. And this is a much more active fork of that repository, which makes it a lot more attractive because you know that it's being actively maintained. And so if you go down here to the README, then immediately you can see a little bit of a quick guide to getting set up. So all we do is just install the package, list it as an installed app, bearing in mind that this is also if you're using the Django REST framework, so you'd have to have that in your installed apps as well. Then you're just gonna add the URL pattern and then some optional configuration for using JSON web tokens. Now I've used the Django REST auth package in I'd say the majority of the projects I've built with Django that require authentication, which is basically every project. And I've never really had any problems with Django REST auth. I'm still using it. And some of the reasons for that is just because it allows you to authenticate in a bunch of different ways via your REST framework. So you can see that there's registration. So I'm just gonna go click on that. So under installation, there's registration. And here you can see it says, if you want to enable standard registration process, you'll need to install Django all auth, which is the package we reviewed in the last episode. And that's just gonna help you set up the authentication with username and password or email and password. So that's just the standard registration process. Then you have social authentication, which is also handled by Django all auth, but through the Django rest auth package, you can then authenticate your users with social authentication via your REST API. So as an example there, Facebook, and all you do is you just create a subclass of their social login view. And then like that, you can create a URL to log in with Facebook via the REST API. Now this is not everything that you need to do. There are some other things you need to do on the front end side of things. So if you're building this with React or Vue, you'll need to handle 
the logic on there as well and most likely use a package that can redirect you to your Facebook app, allow you to log in with Facebook and then redirect you back to your front end where you'll most likely have some query parameters in your URL that you'll then extract and then send as a post request to your back end, which would be this URL to exchange for a token. And then you'd be authenticated. The point I'm making is that it is a little bit of an involved process to authenticate with social authentication via the REST API. So for the purpose of not making this video two hours long, I'm not going to be showing how you can do that in this episode. But either way, then they've got an example for Twitter, an example for GitHub, and it's not a lot of code that you need to write for the back end to work. So that's really nice. Of course, you can write your own social login subclass for another provider. So if you're using Google or any of the other 50 or so providers that are in the Django all of package, you can do so. But so that's social authentication. And then you have JSON web token support as well. So if you're not familiar with the Django rest auth package at all, by default, it uses token authentication. And that's what we're going to take a look at first. Token authentication is relatively simple. Instead of having a session, you have a token and that token is sent in every request that you want to be authenticated. So the Django REST framework will use the Django REST auths token. And so here they're adding even more support beyond the normal token authentication, they're adding JOT authentication, which is really nice. And the package they're using to do that is the simple JOT package, which if we take a look at over here at the GitHub repository, then you can find everything about it and you can go to the documentation. And you can also see that it's a relatively maintained package as well. It's fairly recently updated, which is nice as well. So you've got a good combination of maintained packages by using this fork. So going through JOT authentication would be an entire episode on its own. But it's just nice that you do have that extra added functionality and to enable it it's really simple you, you just specify rest use jot equal true in your settings file and then you can set your own cookie key which is by using jot auth cookie and then you can give your cookie name and then to set the cookie you can just set the cookie header like so but again we're not going to be going through jot authentication this is just advocating the fact that it's relatively easy to set this up because it's using an entire other package to do that. So let's go back here to the top of the installation and let's just copy this command here and let's jump into VS Code. And we're on our new branch here, number two, Django REST auth. I'm gonna install this package and well, first I need to activate the environment and then we can install that. There we go. So now we can just copy these installed apps and we can go to the settings file can go to the installed apps here and just paste them there. Then we can add this URL to the URL patterns. So let's do that in here. I'll remove this comment and we'll need to import include over here and I'll just change this to a path and then I'll just make this auth instead of DJ rest auth. Right, so now let's bring up the terminal and run manage.py migrate. There we go. So we've got the auth token migrations being applied over here. And so let's go back to the documentation here and let's go to API endpoints. So this is for the standard authentication where you can log in, log out, basically very similar to what the Django all of package does. So you can verify your email, you can register users. They even include another one here for getting a specific user which returns all of this information here. And so to test this out, what I'm gonna do is create a file here which I'll just call doc.http and the .http extension allows you to make some calls from this file. You'll see what I mean. So what we can do is we can just use at and then I'll type get and that's just a shortcut. So I'll just tab and specify the URL as HTTP 127.0.0.1.8000 auth and then let's go and test out the registration. So that's gonna be this path over here. There we go. And in fact, this is not gonna be a get, this is gonna be a post request because we're gonna to need to send some data. So we can open up the brackets to specify the data in here. And we're gonna need that data to be all of these fields there. So let's just specify them here. So username, and this also is gonna to need to be keys like that. All right, so username, I'll just specify username here, password and email. 
Great, so there's the data. Then we can just specify some headers over here. So for example, we'll specify the content type as application JSON, right? And then I'll just put a heading over here and say this is registration. And then we can click here to send the request. And let's see, uh, this is right. It's not meant to be an at sign, just post. So if we send the request, then the T connection is being rejected. Right, so let's run the server actually. So we'll just run it there. All right, so we'll keep this open. And now in this case, because we want to register, we're gonna need to use the registration, which is the optional extension. So we can actually just install Django all auth. Install Django all auth, and that's actually already installed for us. So then in the settings.py, we're gonna add these right here above the REST framework. So we've got all auth, all auth account, the registration package for Django REST auth, and then the REST framework as well. Then we can copy this into our URLs as well. And this I'm gonna make auth slash registration and make this a path as well. So just like this. And then in the settings, we'll specify site ID as one. And then also make sure we've got the sites installed there as well. Right, so let's run the server. Let's go back to the doc HTTP file and send the request. And we get some responses back here. So we've got username already exists, email already exists, password one is too common. So let's just go and change this up a little bit. You can close over here and I'll actually close there as well. And let's send the request and let's see, okay, we're gonna get an email error. So that's something we can just fix over here to let the emails be sent in the console instead so that we don't need to set up an actual mail provider. So here we'll just say the email backend equals to django.core.mail.backends.console.email backend. And so with that specified, let's close this here and send the request again. And oh, right, of course, that user has been created already. So let's go and create another user, send the request and this time we can see it's successful. We're gonna get a key back. And that key is our token, which we would use to authenticate in subsequent requests. And down here, we can see the email that we were sent. And so now let's go and test the login. So what I'll do is just copy all of this and change this from registration to login. And then here we can leave the username, the email and password and let's just come back here so here posting to login we need username email and password and it's going to return a token key then let's go and add a comment here and make this login send a request and so let's see we've got your csrf failed so it's expecting a csrf token and that's most likely because our settings for the django rest framework are not 100 percent configured and so what we can do is just search for Django REST framework. And so here we can go to API guide and then authentication. And so here we just need to go to token authentication. So you can see it relies on the auth token, which we have over here. And so here it talks about how authentication is determined. So we can just copy the default authentication classes and I'll just add them over here. And we're going to want to use token authentication. So we're using this installed app already. And that means all we need to do is just add token authentication instead of these. So I'll just remove that. And so we have the server running. Let's come back here, send the request. And if we scroll down, then here we get a key back. And so this key is then what we would use to make a request for any kind of data we want or to, to basically do anything. And so then down here we have the key, which is basically our API token, which we would use to authenticate in every request we make. So for example, if we just create a views.py file inside here, even though we normally wouldn't, but that's fine. We'll just say from the rest framework dot views import API view. And we'll just say this is the user detail view, which is gonna inherit from the API view. We'll add a get method on it. So it takes in self request 
args and keyword args and it's just going to return a response which we'll import and that's just going to contain the email of the user and that's just going to be request.user.email and then over here we can say from rest framework dot response import response and then take this into the URLs so we'll say from dot views import user detail view and then here we'll just add a path and make it slash me and then use the user detail view dot adds view so then back here we can copy this entire thing here and I'll say this is me and this is going to be a get request to slash me then we're not going to be sending any data to it but we do need to pass it a header and that's going to be the authorization header which is going to take the token and then the token that we received from logging in here so I'm just going to send the request to log in again and copy that token there and then put the token there now if I send the request then I get my email back because I'm now authorized but now we need to make sure that this view requires us to be authenticated so what we can do is add permission classes and I'm going to add here from rest framework dot permissions import is authenticated and then add is authenticated as a permission so that means back here if I comment this out and send the request then we get the detail back saying authentication credentials were not provided but if we add the authorization header back and we send the request again then we get the email so like this we have basic token authentication which works right out of the box thanks to the Django rest auth package and this combination works really well thanks to the setup of the Django rest framework as well as these packages and so that is how you would set up the Django rest auth or rather DJ rest auth the fork of the Django rest auth package with this kind of setup you are basically good to go with authenticating in a normal Django application so just out of the box Django application like we saw in the previous video with the Django all auth setup as well as authenticating your REST API and it works with not a lot of code so just the Django REST framework auth token and then the DJ REST auth package as well and so on that note thanks for watching if you enjoyed this video leave a like and a comment down below and otherwise don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one